zero. So I'm going last, and as the organizer, one of the organizers, I can break the rules in terms of what slides to prepare. And also, since I'm following Scott, who is a thought piece, I'm going to leave you uh, with some questions. Uh, maybe more questions than answers. But the first question I will, uh, the major question I'll pose is what is, if a city, smart city isn't so smart? And so I think, how many people have heard of this term smart city? Okay. It is the, here's a definition basically, it's a designation to a city that incorporates information and communication technologies, the Internet of Things, right, to enhance the quality and performance of urban services. So lots of sensors on buildings, on transportation, on utilities, right, with the idea that we can reduce resource consumption, that we can reduce our energy footprint, our carbon footprint, and that then we can use this emerging technology to become more sustainable. Um, thus, we have this sort of the, the central role of energy, of course, under the specter of climate change, ways that we can instrument our buildings, instrument our transportation grids in ways that reduce emissions. This is the carbon footprint of, of New York, based on the New York City's uh, mayor's office. Uh, it is one of the most censored cities with some of the most widely available uh, data for any city in the world, partially a legacy of the Bloomberg era, but you can get so much data on, on New York. They did an extensive analysis of the kind of the emissions of, of the city of New York. Almost all of it is attributed to buildings, basically, and transportation and landfills and wastewater treatment. So the idea is, is that if we can get our hands around these systems, instrument them, make them smarter, we can reduce our carbon footprint. My question for you is, will, say we shift to completely renewables for transportation and buildings in the city of New York, as an example. Will that create a sustainable city? Is that enough? Yes? No? No? Yes. Why, why not? Anybody? Yeah. Yes? Yes? OK. This is a study, and I'm borrowing other research, this is a study that shows the household carbon footprint of the largest 28 metropolitan regions in the United States. This is using a consumption-based accounting to get our hands around greenhouse gas emissions. You can see some common themes here, primarily of which housing and transportation, in many cases, is just 50% of the carbon footprint of the city. Right. So we have goods, food, and services, which make up, in some cases, as much as half of a city's carbon footprint. So if we were to think about, actually I had New York instrumented here, it didn't come through, but basically New York, if you take this more consumption-based accounting approach, less than half of the city's footprint is attributed to buildings and transportation. So I'm pushing you to think more. If we're going to think about sustainability, we have to come to terms with these sectors as well. This is very important. We can't equate sustainability just with buildings and transportation, or city sustainability. One of the things this study also found out is that higher incomes lead to a higher carbon footprint. So you might be able to increase density, but if people are getting on a plane and flying to and fro, if their diet is heavy in meat, if they're buying lots of things, they can live in a very dense environment but have a very high footprint, especially if they're higher income residents. So I think it's a complex stew of questions, especially when you have the income level. And you see this across all those cities. As incomes rise, their footprint rises, even if they live in highly Lead platinum multifamily housing developments. So that's a complex issue. And the question I think we have to grapple with is can we decouple between income level and urban carbon footprints? I don't have an easy answer for that, but I think it's an extremely important challenge with thinking about dealing with climate change. And so, thus, to conclude, how would a smart city heal this metabolic rift? Basically, this urban as a space of consumption where we consume food, we consume products with where they're produced and the conditions upon which they're produced, the environmental impacts of that production, the social impacts of that production. Can we use this revolution of the Internet of Things, of censoring, to really get our hands on where things come from and reconnect the ecological feedbacks between where what we consume as urban dwellers and those myriad of impacts that we're seeing across the planet? Thank you.